Hi friends, it's Carrie from Stretch Chi. Welcome to class. It's Friday morning. Um, I am joined here today with my new kitten, Thomas O'Malley, the alley cat, and Suri, who's back there. She's not thrilled about the kitten, but also thrilled about the kitten. So she, I can't tell if they're playing or if she's trying to kill it. So class may be interesting today. If I need to cut class off to save the lives of the cats, I will, I hate to admit, but hopefully all goes well. Fingers crossed. All right, let's get started. I um, usually before class, I pick a card. And so I'm gonna pick a yoga pose. Ooh, reclined twist. This is a nice one, actually. Let's do that. I like it. What did you find? A little toy? Yeah, okay, everything's a toy to a cat. So we're gonna go into our recline twist. And then I've been pulling cards also to um, just kind of get a good attention set for class today. So what the cards I'm gonna to use today are um, Louise Hayes, Power, Power Thought, Thought Power, I can't remember what they're called. I've had them for a long time and they food box away. And let's see. Oh, okay. It says, I am worth loving. I do not have to earn love. I am lovable because I resist, because I exist, because I resist. It's, I say that too many times. I'm lovable because I exist. Others reflect the love I have for myself. See? I hope you can see that. I'm looking at the wrong camera. Yes. Beautiful, huh? All right. So let's put some space today into loving ourselves. That sounds like a great idea. I love it. Uh, for those of you who are here, please let me know who you are. Send me, put a little note in the chat. If you're watching this on your television, I highly suggest also logging in on your phone or a tablet so that you can participate in the chat with us. Um, as we do class, why, I will problem solve you guys if you need help. So just put your little notes in the chat and, um, and I will help you through the different stretches. Um, if you don't want to put anything in the chat, then I recommend keeping a little notebook so you can keep track of what's going on in your own bodies, okay? If it's your first time here, this class might be a little more advanced than what you're ready to do. So if that's the case and you're like overwhelmed, just go to my channel and um, you can find that below, but it's just Carrie Collins. You look up my channel and you can find a lot of like, like stretch by stretch videos where you can learn how to do the stretches one at a time. You can also find a playlist called Stretching for the Inflexible. And those are a little bit more accessible for people. Um, also, they all have problem solving videos attached to every single stretch. So you can work through those as needed, okay? So uh, those are some options for you. Now we have three rules we follow when we do this method. So the first rule is that you move all the time. Second rule is that you resist all the time. So you're going to keep your muscles engaged while you stretch. And the third rule is that if anything hurts, stop right away. Don't do anything that doesn't feel good. Let me know in the chat if you need some assistance, if you need a variation. Uh, there is a little bit of a delay. It's about 30 seconds. So if you put something in the chat, I don't respond right away. That's why. So don't worry about it. Okay. All right, my friends, let's get to it. Reclined twist and a little bit of love. You are worth loving. We are all, sorry. Did you fall down? She's so comfy. I hate to, um, I hate to disturb her. She said, it's been a rough day for her. She's a new family. She has a new family. A new baby. Yeah, there you go. You're okay. Yeah. All right. So to get into this recline twist, we're going to lay on our backs first. Now, the way that I like to start class is we go into the stretch just to kind of get a feeling for what our bodies are doing, what they feel like doing. If you feel uncomfortable in this stretch, then of course don't do it. But I just want you to kind of get a feel for what your body wants to do today. Okay. So in this recline twist, you lay on your back, bring your right leg straight. Let your arms come out to the side so that your back is flat on the ground. And then take your left leg and just drop it over. You can let your right foot twist with you and just pay attention to what your body feels like as you go into this twist. You don't have to force it. Just see what it feels like. I feel some restriction in my inner thigh here. I feel a little bit of pinch there. 
I feel like I don't want to twist so much. I'm feeling some uh, in my chest here, a little bit of tension there. And now I'm feeling a little in my back too. So just take note of what you feel because we're going to work through some of this stuff, okay? Now let's try the other side. So bring your left leg straight. Your right leg will come across. This is Thomas O'Malley. Hi, Bubba. And then you're going to drop your knee over to the left and see how that twist feels for you. Again, I feel some inner thigh. I feel some restriction in my back. I don't feel my chest so much in this one, but I do feel like it feels icky through here. So just write down a couple notes and see what this feels like for you. Does it feel good? Does it feel bad? Do you notice where your restrictions are? You can write those notes down in the chat, or you can write them in your notebook, okay? But just keep a, a, keep a tally for what's going on for you. Now let's go ahead and work through some things. I want to work through our inner thighs because that's where I was starting to feel some barriers. I think it'll help for you too to get that barrier removed as well. So we're going to lay on our backs. Bring your feet up towards the ceiling. <laughs> Cat hair everywhere. Grab your knees on the inside. Now you're going to squeeze your legs together to activate your inner thighs and then use your arms to open you wide into a wide leg split. Find that inner thigh stretch and then squeeze in for strength. Open for your stretch and squeeze in for strength. You should feel your inner thighs working. When you get open here, you should feel an inner thigh stretch. And you just go back and forth. Nice job, you guys. We do about six to 10 of each stretch. You wanna make sure that you feel really good and comfortable in this stretch, that you don't go too far. And remember that our intention today is to really pay attention to our thoughts about self-love. So just think that, okay, I am worth loving. I am lovable because I exist. This is kind of an amazing idea. I was watching a YouTube video by Thich Nhat Hanh, if you guys know him, he's a monk. Um, where is he from? Nepal, maybe? I'm not sure. He's so amazing. And somebody said, like, how do you love yourself? How do you uh, how do you come into loving yourself? And he said, well, first you take a deep breath. <laughs> and everybody laughed, of course, because you know, when you take a mindful breath, you remember that you have a body, right? So as you're doing these stretches, if you just get into your body, remember that you have a body and that you are lovable just in the fact that you have a body. That's amazing in itself, right? And your body is so amazing in itself. No matter what it is, no matter what kind of issues you have or what problems you run into or, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Your body itself is a, is a work of nature. It is a miracle in itself, right? So let's take care of it today. Oh my goodness, kittens. So <laughs> bend your hips at 90 degrees and bend your knees also at 90 degrees. You lay on your side. Put your hand on top of your knee and we're going to work on our glutes. So open up for strength and then close for your stretch. You're going to push your arm down towards the floor. Hey, <laughs> just go up and down. <laughs> it's full on crazy here. Up for strength and then push down for your stretch. You'll find this stretch in your glutes on the top leg. If you feel it on the bottom leg, then just switch sides, okay? Oh, there she goes. Up for strength and down for stretch. And again, about 10. Happy. I love you so much. Okay, you can stay right here with me. This is Thomas O'Malley, the alley cat. <laughs> New YouTube star. Surrey is very mad about it. All right, now when you feel like you're ready to switch sides, you can go ahead and flip over. Oh, hey, 
Don't let your butt on camera. See, so little. So little. Just a little butt. Okay. So lay on your other side. Bring your hips to 90 degrees and your knees also to 90 degrees. Put your hand on top of your leg. Push up for strength and then push down for your stretch. He is nine weeks old, rescued from a puddle in Pilsen. So cute. So, so cute. Okay. Up for strength and down for your stretch. A little guy. Do you want to stretch too? Stretch too. Yeah, let your butt some more. All right, up for strength, down for stretch. Find the stretch on the outside of your hip, right here in your glutes. See how that feels for you. If it feels uncomfortable, you can stop doing this. Or if you don't feel it at all, or if you just feel it on the other side, let me know. Put that in the chat or write it down in your book so we can keep track. The reason why I want you to write it down in the chat is because then I can actually take you through some problem solving on that stretch, okay? If you need extra assistance, then that's how we do it, right? All right, I'm going to raise this camera up just a little bit. It's a little low. And then we're going to get into our hip flexors. Put your right leg behind you and your left leg in front. I have a towel under my knee because I ran into my bed with my leg. And I have a huge bruise on the front of my shin. You can put a towel there if you want, but you don't have to, okay? So my left leg's in the front and I'm gonna resist like I'm kicking back with my heel, like I'm trying to kick myself in the glutes, like this. That's gonna activate the hamstring in the front. I'm gonna activate my back leg like I'm trying to kick my knee forward, like I'm trying to drag this towel forward towards the front of the mat. And then I'll use my front leg to pull me into a lunge. This is gonna give you a stretch to the front of your hip on the right side. And then pull back for strength training. And just go back and forth, forward for strength, and pull back into your stretch. Now this is fine to do just this piece of this stretch, but if you want to add a little extra, let's add some arms in here. So you can reach your arms, just extend your fingers nice and wide, and reach up towards the ceiling as you go into the lunge. And then pull back for strength. He's all over the place. He's a very happy little baby. Oh, so reach with your fingers to get a deeper stretch. It stretches up the fascia. Now, it's not enough just to raise your arms over your head. You'll want to, like, reach with them. Like, get some tension in them so that it feels like you're pushing through mud or, like, through spider webs. And you just go back and forth. Hey, little guy. Yeah, what are you doing? Ouch. Oh, that hurts. Okay. Yeah, that's a bad idea. That was a really bad idea. Okay. <laughs> Find the stretch in the way that feels the best to you, okay? Just go for it. If arms up, you can twist if you want. You just do whatever feels the best to you, okay? And now let's go ahead and switch sides. So if you want, you can put the towel under your knee. Or you can not, it's up to you. You're going to bring your right leg to the front. Again, try to kick your heel back. Whoa! Try to kick your heel back towards your glutes to engage your hamstring. Your left leg is going to try to kick forward, like you're trying to pull the towel forward towards the front of the mat. And use your front leg to pull you into the stretch, and your back leg pulls you back. You just go back and forth just like that. So your front leg will win to bring you into the stretch. Your back leg brings you into strength training, so the muscle shortening here. And then it just goes back and forth. <laughs> I, you guys, I don't even know if you're stretching anymore or just watching the cat. I could probably adjust the camera. She is such a star. It's a boy. He's the star. Thomas O'Malley. So little. All right, so now when you come forward into the stretch, you can reach with your fingers to get a deeper stretch. Really reach up, like pretend like you're pushing through spider webs and you're trying to get out of the webbing. 
Stretch it all out. It'll feel really good. It'll feel like you're waking up in the morning and you're yawning. If you don't feel that, then you don't need to do that with your arms. You should feel this feeling like the stretch is increased by reaching. That you can get a deeper stretch. You can find more tension to pull out with that reach. If you don't feel that, it means that there's something stuck somewhere else. So maybe it would feel better for you to twist or maybe to just go back and forth. You don't have to do anything that doesn't feel good or you don't have to do a move just because I said to, right? Oh boy. Kitten energy is the greatest. It's the greatest. This is how people turn into crazy cat ladies. That's the truth. All right, now we're gonna go into a stretch for your hamstrings. So lay on your back. Bring your right leg up and grab the ball of your foot with both hands. You could also use your towel and put it around your foot to extend your arms or use a yoga strap or something like that. You're gonna kick your heel down toward your glutes. That's gonna engage the hamstring here. Keep the hamstring engaged as you pull up. You're gonna pull straight up towards your head and then kick down for strength and up for stretch. And we're just gonna go back and forth just like that. Down for strength and up for stretch. You should find this stretch right in the back of your hamstring here. If you don't feel that, write it in the chat, let me know, okay? If you do feel it, then keep going, okay? Find the way that feels the best for you. Down for strength, up for stretch. About 10 on each side. <laughs> Down for strength and up for stretch. Find that engagement right here in the hamstring. Make sure that you've got it. And of course, only go as far as feels comfortable to you, okay? If you need to stop, because your body says stop, then listen to that, right? All right, and let's switch sides again. So now grab the ball of your foot. I like to grab my toes with my left hand. The important thing is that your knee is pointing straight in towards your body. You could also grab with both hands, but I like to support my head. So whatever feels good to you. Kick down for strength and pull up for your stretch. And you just go back and forth like this, kicking down for strength training. Keeping that muscle engaged, you pull up for your stretch. So if I slipped, my leg would kick down, my arm would fly up. Okay, you wanna make sure that you keep the muscle engaged all the time. And we just go back and forth. Down for strength, up for stretch. It's good to stretch today. And of course, remember, we're setting an intention of self-love today. So if you feel uh, during the stretch, like the stretch feels good to you, take a second and be grateful for your body, for the miracle that it is, for the bit of hamstring mobility that you have, even if it's not a lot. It's okay. Down for strength and up for stretch. All right. Now we're going to go into a little bit of twisting after doing those couple stretches and see if we can get a little bit deeper into our um, into our twist so that into our recline twist that we started with. Okay. So bring your right leg. I'm sorry. Bring your left leg out to the side and your right leg is tucked in and you're going to take your right arm and bring it right behind your back. Grab your elbow with your left hand and resist like you're trying to pull both arms apart. From here, pull towards your straight leg. Now, if you can't get your leg straight, it would be okay to bend it here, that's fine. And even if this leg doesn't want to come down all the way, you can be wherever your body feels good. Okay, but what we're looking at here is keeping your hips on the ground 
And then as you turn to the side, keeping that hip grounded so that you can feel this stretch from your armpit down to your waist, okay? So we're just gonna go up and down just like this for a couple reps to make sure that this feels good. If you don't feel this from here down, like if you feel it in your tricep or if you feel it on top of your shoulder, if you feel it in the back of your shoulder, then go ahead and stop. Or if this you can't get into this position, then you can stop as well. And then let me know, just write in the chat if you're feeling anything funny, if there's anything specific that you wanna work through and we can work through that during this set. All right, now let's go ahead and switch sides. So you're gonna tuck your left leg in, bring your right leg out to the side, take your left arm over your head, and let your hand just drop behind your back. And so it's kind of like behind your shoulder blades, if that feels good. But in this position, I'm pretty relaxed. I'm not trying to pull my elbow towards my head. I'm just in a place where I feel comfortable. <laughs> then grab your elbow with your right hand, and you're gonna resist like you're pulling both arms apart. And then pull with your right hand towards your right foot. So you just pull right on over. Find the stretch in the side body on the left side, keeping your hips grounded. Now remember, if you need to find a better position for yourself, it would be fine to do that. So just bend this knee, maybe bring this one up a little bit. Find the position that feels the best for you, okay? Boy, this guy really showed up for class today, this kitten. He's a superstar. <laughs> for those of you who've been watching class for all this time, wondering what that thing is on the wall, it's called a cat dancer. It's a wire with a little bit of cardboard on the bottom and the cats go nuts over it. But like, Suri doesn't care about it. It's been sitting there forever, apparently. Kitten loves it, so that's fun. He's gonna sleep so well after class is over. All right, once you've done enough stretches on this side, then we're gonna move into the top of our shoulders. So bring your right arm in so that your elbow's close to your body and grab your wrist with your left hand over top. And you're gonna resist like you're trying to pull both arms apart. So push up for strength and pull down for stretch. And when you get to the bottom here, bring your head over to the left side. So your left ear will go towards your left shoulder. And you just go up and down. Up for strength, down for stretch, finding the stretch through the side of your neck. And remember to always resist and always move because that's how you're going to get long-term benefits from the stretch, right? So up for strength and down for stretch. And remember, just bring your head over to the side when you're ready. You just go up and down. It's that easy. All right, and then let's go ahead and switch sides. So bring your elbow of your left arm towards your body so your elbow is tucked into your side. Grab your wrist on top with your right hand and resist like you're pulling both arms apart. Push up for strength and pull down for your stretch. And as you pull down, you're gonna bring your right ear to your right shoulder to get a stretch through the neck and the side of your shoulder here through your arm. So up for strength and down for stretch. Right ear to right shoulder. Up for strength, down for stretch. And you just go up and down. It's pretty easy, pretty simple. Just make sure that you're always resisting and always moving. Find the stretch that works the best for you. I know, Helen, isn't he ridiculous? He's so cute. I just got him last night at like five o'clock, so he's pretty new. This is his first day here. And he is not slowing down at all. <laughs> He's probably going to play like this for the whole hour. <laughs> all right, now we're going to work on a rotator cuff. 
So you can sit however you want for the stretch. You could even stand up. Just be nice to your knees, whatever feels good to you, okay? Take your hands and interlock them. So you just grab on like this and bring your thumb right over your head. So your hands are hovering right over the crown of your head. And then you're going to squeeze your elbows together like you're trying to pop a balloon between your arms. So squeeze in with your arms. You should feel this in the back of your shoulders. And then open up this straight chain. So you just go back and forth. So as we open here, your shoulder blades come together. Those muscles are shortening, so they're getting stronger. As you close, you're going to get a stretch through the back of your shoulders. Your resistance here is mostly gravity, so you don't need to worry about it too much, but you want to make sure that you feel a tension as you're moving back and forth. So you might have to just kind of pretend, make it up. But there should be tension the whole time in the back of your shoulders. You do not have to get your elbows to touch, okay? So just do what feels right to you. So open for strength and close for stretch. Okay. What do you think? Mm -hmm. You need to show off your little belly. Ouch. Don't do that effort too. Okay. <laughs> All right, now when you guys are ready, we're going to work on the front of our shoulders. So let's go to the wall. Find a good wall space and bring your hand against the wall so that your fingers are pointing out to the side like this. It's going to give you a little bit of a wrist stretch. And then what you're going to do is try to pull your arm to the front. So it's like you're, if you have both hands, if you were trying to clap them like with a big like alligator, sideways alligator clap. Then if you activate your arm in that way and let your arm win, then your body will twist so that you're facing the wall. Keep resisting with your arms. I'm trying to pull my arm forward and I'm going to use my body to overcome that resistance to open up and you'll feel a stretch to the front of your shoulders. Then just use your arm to pull you back in. And again, now if this is hard on your wrist, you can use a door frame. And in the door frame, your hand could be straight like this. So you could like put your hand like this and resist in the same way without adding the wrist stretch. But I do find that putting that wrist stretch in makes the stretch more intense. So it's up to you. Did you fall down? No, oh, Dad. What? <laughs> oh, it's such a good stretch. Right for the front of your shoulder, right through here. If you feel anything different, let me know, okay? And then after we've done enough of these stretches, and by enough I mean when your body tells you that it wants to be done, then we're going to switch sides. So take your other hand and put it up against the wall so that your fingers are pointing towards the back of your body. And you're going to resist like you're trying to pull to the front. So it's like you're trying to pull your arms together. So if I let my body, or if I let my arm win, my body's going to turn in so that this part of my shoulder here is really contracted. And then I'm going to keep contracting there as I use my body to open up. So I'm going to turn away from you guys to open my arm up into that stretch. And you just go back and forth. So you pull in. I got the cat carrier out for the kitten and Suri is actually sleeping inside the cat carrier right now. Go ahead, yes. She's like full on asleep. <laughs> so opening up is your stretch, closing is strength. Let me know if you have any problems in the stretch. I'll help you through it. If you just twist open and find that stretch in the front of your chest and then Close for strength training. Yeah, ouch. What are you doing? Where do you think you're going? Huh? Where do you think you're going? Yeah, that's a bad idea. That's a bad idea. Okay. Now let's go back to our twist. Yeah. I want my leg. What do you think? Huh? 
All right. So let's get this twist a little bit more intense. So we started off with one leg out to the side, the other one tucked in. Why don't you use your left leg out, your right leg in, your right arm up, and then we pulled over and pulled back. Now you could continue doing that stretch, but if you want to make this stretch a little bit more intense, then you can follow me into these next variations. So let me show you the first one again. Bring your right arm up so that your hand just hovers behind your head or behind your neck. Grab your elbow with the other hand, and you're going to resist if you're trying to pull both arms apart, and then pull over your left foot. It's okay to have the knee bent. It's okay to have your leg a little higher. You just find what works for you. If you want to take a deeper stretch, bend this leg, take your left arm, and turn it so that your palm is up, and you let your elbow bend and bring it down towards the floor. That's going to give you some resistance between your leg and your arm, and then grab your foot with that hand. You could also wrap a towel around your foot and hold that instead of holding your foot. That would be okay, too. Coach, what are you doing? Okay. And then, I'm like, a, I'm like a giant cat tree right now. I think that's what's happening. So now bring your head, your hand on your head, and we're going to twist. So you're going to twist down for string and open for your stretch and we just go back and forth so down into your strength training move this is contracting in pull with your left hand to bring you up and into your twist And you can find the stretch in the side of your body here. It's a really nice twist. Now, if you want an even deeper stretch, and this is up to you, you pick the range that works the best for you. Then take that right arm and open your fingers up really wide and reach to the left wall. So nice. So twisting down, this is strength training. Pull with your left arm to bring you into this twist. And then once you're there, Reach over to the left to get a deeper stretch. Now let's switch sides. What do you say? What do you say? Huh? What do you say? Okay. <laughs> let's switch sides. So now bring your right leg out to the side. Your left arm will tuck in. You can take your left arm and bring it behind your head. Grab your elbow with your other hand and try to resist by pulling both arms apart. And from here, you can just Pull over your right foot to get a deeper stretch through your side body. And you just go up and down, up for strength and down for stretch. You can stay here, or if you want a deeper stretch, bend this knee, take your right arm and turn it over so your palm faces up and your elbow is pointing down. Bring your elbow as far to the floor as you feel comfortable and grab your foot, just like a lobster claw, just grab your foot. You could also wrap a rope around your foot to extend, but that would be okay. My upper arm is against my upper leg here, like just a little over my knee. There's resistance there. That's a good place to resist. Then you can bring your head to your, your hand to your head, turn down. This is strength training. Everything's contracting in. And I'm going to pull with my right hand, and that helps me come into this twist. So you can come over, pulling your whole body over to the right. Now, if this doesn't feel good, just go back to the other option, right? Go back to the easier version. It's just where your body is today. So you can honor that. Body is a miraculous thing. It will change and adapt over time. So if you can't do this today, don't worry about it. Do what you can. Do what feels good to you. And if you're nice to your body, if you're loving to your body, it will adapt in a good way. If you're mean to your body, it's going to adapt in the wrong way. It's going to try to keep you from doing this. So don't do anything that doesn't feel good. If you want to take this a step further, reach your fingers wide and reach towards the white wall. The right wall. This wall is also white. <laughs> Down for strength. Up for stretch. And reach to the right. That's a good one, don't you think? Oh, you got me. 
And then scratches all over me. And the little scratches all over. All over. All right. You guys are good and patient for letting me play with this kitten all day long. I can't even stand it. He's so cute. So cute. I know. Hopefully, Surrey will be, um, oh my gosh, I'm covered in hair. Hopefully, Surrey will be happier next time you guys can see her later. All right, let's work on some other leg stretches. So I think getting into this recline twist, we're going to need a little bit more work on elasticity on our inner thighs. So let's bring our feet together. We're going to go into a butterfly position. Your elbows on your knees. Push down and open for strength training. I'm sorry, just for your resistance. Push down for your arms and open up. And you're going to squeeze in, contract the muscles in your inner thighs. Then use your arms to open you up. So your legs squeeze in. Keep that resistance. Your arms will open you into the stretch. In for strength and open for stretch. You should be able to find a stretch in your inner thighs here. If you can't feel that stretch, let me know. We'll work through some other things. If you feel any pain here also, let me know. We'll work through it. Up for strength and open for stretch. All right, now we're going to go into a stretch for our hamstrings. We're going to work on our lateral hamstring first, the hamstring for the outside. If you have a chair, this would be a good one to do on a chair. So let me grab mine real quick. Okay, and put the chair on your mat so that the back of the chair is at the front of the mat here and the chair is facing long ways on your mat. Now what you're going to do here is face your chair, like face it square on, bring your right leg up to the left front corner of the chair. So your leg will actually be diagonal across your body. You're going to push down with your leg into the chair, so it's like you're trying to kick the chair over. You're going to work on that jump a little bit. Then once you find that resistance, lean straight forward, so you're going to lean straight into the chair. And you can hold. Up for strength. And you lean over for your stretch. You can do it. You can. Oh, you're so close. Okay. There we go. Pick down into the chair. Lean forward for your stretch. It's a good thing he's cute. Because he's making it hard for me to find the right words. <laughs> I'm a little distracted today, I have to admit. And you just go back and forth. And you should feel the stretch on the outer part of your hamstring on the right leg. Okay? If you feel anything different or if there's anything you want to work on, let me know. You can also write it in your notebook, keep notes, or write it in the chat, and I'll help you through it. All right, and then we'll switch sides. So go ahead and stand on your right leg facing straight on. Take your left leg up and bring it to the right corner of your chair. Kick down into the chair with your heel and then lean forward into the stretch. Up for strength and down for your stretch. You just lean forward into it. You'll find this on the outer side of your left leg. So you come up for strength and down for stretch. And always, guys, always, if anything doesn't feel good, don't go that far. Okay? Don't do it. it. Don't force yourself. Really honor your body and what your body wants to do, what your body needs. It may be that your body doesn't want to go too far into the stretch. Now, I'm leaning as far forward as my body wants. When my body puts on the brakes, I kick right back up. I could force myself a lot deeper into the stretch, but it's not productive for me, and it doesn't matter. Right? It's, there's no reason for it because what I want to do is pull tension out in the way that feels good to my body. 
Okay, so listen to yourself. Honor what your body needs. You don't do anything that doesn't feel good, okay? All right. Now we're going to go into a stretch for our quads next. Uh, I think we can, I'm going to leave the chair here just because he's sitting on it and I don't feel like moving it. But um, we're going to do a side angle quad stretch. So get on your, like lay on your back, bring your hands behind you so that you're on your elbows. Bring your left leg out to the side of your mat. So I'm actually taking my foot and bringing it off my mat. So now my hip is angled out, my knee is angled out at a 45 degree angle. So it's going to diagonal in that direction. Then I'm going to take my right leg and grab my knee with my ankle, with my heel. And you're going to resist like you're trying to push both legs apart. Keep your hips on the ground and pull your right leg down towards the floor, letting your foot roll with you. So my left leg is turning over. I'm not trying to keep my foot on the ground. Okay. Up for strength and down for stretch. Now I'm keeping my hips down. This is getting a stretch through the top of my hip and into my thigh. I don't want to get a stretch in my back yet. We're going to do that, but not yet, okay? So up for strength and down for stretch. And you just go back and forth just like this. Now, of course, you can work in a smaller range of motion if you need to. It would be fine. You don't have to, like, you don't have to go all the way to the floor. It's not a big deal. You just do what feels good for you. Up for strength and down for stretch. All right, now when you're ready, we'll switch sides. So take your right leg and bring it off your mat so that your leg is angled to out at a 45 degree angle. So I'm like actually angling my knee away from the chair. I'll move about 45 degrees. Then I'm gonna take my left leg and put it on top of my knee and give some resistance between my heel and my right knee. Okay, and then resist from here. Keep your hips on the ground and pull your knee towards the center of your mat. Let your foot roll with you as you go. And when you get to the point where you feel like you might want to twist your hips, then push back up. So you're keeping your hips on the ground the whole time. Up for strength and then down for your stretch, moving in the range that feels good to you. Don't feel like you have to move at the same speed as me either. You can move slower, you can move faster, you can do as many repetitions as you want. If you want to take a break, and it's up to you, okay? Do what feels the best to you. <laughs> up for strength and down for stretch. Let's do one more after this and then we're gonna come back up to our chair. All right, so come on up. Oh, now he's asleep on the chair. I don't ever want him to get big. Okay, so now stand up and face forward, but your chair is to the side of you. So your chair should be on the left side of your body. I want you to line up your body so that you are in line with the back end of the chair. So like, not the front here, but the back part here. And then take your left leg and put it on the front corner of the chair. Okay, so the part of the chair that's more forward and to this side. Push your foot into the chair like you're trying to pull your heels together. This is gonna activate your inner hamstring. And then from here, keep your hips facing forward, keep resisting with your foot, and just bend at your hips straight forward. You should feel a stretch through the inner part of your hamstring now. So up for strength, and then bend at your hips, to come into this stretch. You're bending straight forward, not over your foot, not over your left foot, but over your right foot. So your right foot's pointing straight forward, your body's gonna fold straight forward. You should feel it right here on your inner thigh. That's good, okay? If you don't feel that, let me know. Take notes, write it down. Up for strength and then fold into your stretch. Let's do one more and then we'll switch sides. Up for strength. And down for stretch. Good. Okay. Now, he's asleep. All right. We're just going to turn him around. 
So don't move. Good. It worked. Okay. So now the same thing, but you're going to use your different leg. So I'm going to face straight on. I'm going to lift my right leg and put it at the corner of the chair, the front corner of the chair. And I'm going to resist like I'm pushing that foot down towards my other foot. And then from here, bend at your hips, keep resisting with that leg, and fold straight forward into the stretch. Use your right leg to push you back up. So there's like a scissoring feeling between your legs, and you just go up and down. Bend it at your hips, and push up for strength. So it's just back and forth, strength and stretch, right? On the way down, you get this nice stretch through your inner thighs. On the way up, you get strength training. So just go back and forth. I think I'm going to keep him. I think I'll keep him. Oh, kittens. The person I adopted it from, she is fostering kittens and has, not anymore, but because two of them got picked up yesterday, had nine kittens and an adult cat in her house. Nine kittens. Can you even imagine? Holy cow. Insane. Crazy, crazy, right? All right, let's put him over here. Hopefully you guys can still see him because he's so cute. I think you can. Okay, so now I want to work a little bit more on some twists. So as long as these feel good to you, you can do it. Now remember when we started this set, we brought one leg off the mat with our elbows up and we had our knee press, our foot pressed over our knee and we pulled in and you got the stretch to the outside of your hip. Well, this time I want you to lay down and you're gonna do the same thing. You'll take your left leg up to the side, your right leg will hook on top and you pull down. But this time go ahead and let your hips raise up so that you get a little bit of twist here. You could try bringing that knee all the way to the ground but then resist and pull your hips back into place. Only do this if it feels good. Only go as far as feels good to you. Don't take it too far if it's not okay, but go ahead and let your hips roll over so that there's a little bit of twist happening in your back. So up for strength, and you bring yourself down into the stretch, letting your hips roll, letting that knee come all the way to the ground if it wants to, and then back up. Let's just do one more because this can be a little intense. All right, now we're gonna switch sides. So bring your right leg off the mat so that your right leg is out to the right at about 45 degrees. Hook your knee on top, resist in the same way, like you're pulling one leg up and the other one down. So your right leg is pushing up, your left leg is pulling towards the mat. So you're going to let your left leg win, your right leg still fights, to bring that knee as close to the ground as you want to, letting your hips roll if they feel good, and then back up for strength, bringing your hips square back to the mat. And as you pull down gently, go gently, make sure that you're always resisting and always moving, and only moving in the range that feels safe and good to you. If you go too far, you could hurt yourself, right? So don't go too far. Only go to the point where your body says that's enough. And if this is all, that's all. It's okay. Just do what feels good to your body, okay? It is not beneficial for you to take yourself into a painful place because then your body's going to create protective mechanisms around that, right? So you actually are doing more harm than good when you take yourself into a place of pain. It's not helpful. But again, the body is an amazing, miraculous thing. It is so amazing. It's like awe-inspiring when you think about it. But it only works to your benefit when you do loving, caring things for your body, right? So if you are taking yourself into a place that feels really good, your body is going to accept that. It's going to want to do that move more often, right? If you take yourself into a place of pain, your body is not going to like that. It's going to start building barriers to try to keep you from doing that. So a lot of times people think when they're stretching that they can get more benefit by doing something that's painful because they're breaking through barriers. It's not really how it works. 
those are the wrong barriers to break through. There are other barriers that you can break through, but usually when you break through those barriers, they feel good, okay? So when you take yourself into a painful place, you're actually going to create more walls that need to be broken down later. So just be really aware of that when you're stretching. You don't want to do anything that hurts. Got it? Got it, good, okay. So now let's do one more twist. Bring your left leg straight up. Actually, we'll make this the right leg since we were mirroring on the camera. So bring your right leg straight out in front of you. Take your left leg over top in a place that feels safe and good to you. That could be pretty low. It could be high. It doesn't matter. You just do what feels good. And if this doesn't feel good at all, keep that leg on the other side. Okay? Now what we're going to do is take our opposite arm and put it over top. So this is the left leg and the right arm over top. You're gonna add resistance between your arm and your leg and use your right arm to pull your body over to the left. So I'm pushing with the outer part of my elbow to twist into the stretch. Go as far as your body wants to go and then pull back in. And you just go back and forth. I'm using my back arm here too to help out. I'm resisting by pushing my arm into the floor. And so my both arms are very active as I go into this twist. Just go as far as your body wants to go. Again, nothing should hurt. And if it does, then move in a smaller range. Okay? If it doesn't feel good at all to do this twist, then skip it altogether. Not even worth it. Got it? So you just twist open and close, resisting all the time, moving all the time, nothing gets held. Okay, let's go ahead and switch sides. So bring your right leg, sorry, bring your left leg to the front, take your right leg over top or on the inside, whatever feels the best for you, and then take your left arm and hook it over top. Your right arm can go behind you to the back if that feels good. Just make sure you feel supported. Then you're gonna resist by pushing your left elbow into your right knee and allowing yourself to go into this twist, and then come back the other way. Now this should feel good to you the whole time. If it doesn't feel good, you're going too far, okay? Be nice to yourself. And you just go back and forth, finding this twist in a way that feels really good to you, okay? And so as you twist, I guess I'm going towards the skeleton here, his name's Jeff, that's the stretch. And as I come back the other way, I'm strengthening all those muscles that I just stretched. That's just as important as stretching. And so you just go back and forth. Ah, so good. So, so good. Okay, friends. Now, let's take these stretches and Put them all together so that we can do this recline twist that we started with. This should feel really good to you. The great thing about this stretch is that gravity is your resistance. So you can actually really relax into the stretch. But I want to make sure that you guys really understand this idea of movement. You don't want to force yourself into this twist. So don't try to push yourself down towards the floor. Uh, you want to make sure that you feel comfortable Gravity is your resistance, so let it work for you, okay? And, uh, and make sure that during the whole thing, you're moving. So move slow, all right? What you're going to do is bring your arms open to the sides. Your hands can be up or down, whatever feels good to you. Bring your right leg up, and then you're going to let your right leg turn over. Your left leg follows, so your left toes are turning as well. And keeping your arms on the ground. Let yourself go into this twist. You can even look over your right hand if you want. And see how that feels. And notice I'm just very slowly bringing my knee towards the floor. And then when my body says stop, I'm going to pull back up until my hips are square again. And I'm going to do that motion three or four times. So I'm just going to slowly let my hips turn and fighting gravity. My body is trying to keep me up. With gravity is pulling me over, my arms are staying on the ground. I'm letting gravity do its work. And you go back and forth. 
If this stretch feels good to you, you can add a fascial stretch onto it by straightening your leg out as you go. That's going to be more intense. Ooh, mama. Yeah, that's a good stretch. That is a good stretch, my friends. Oh, so you reach, reach. Should feel like you're growling, like you're yawning, waking up in the morning, like, Roar! Do you guys growl when you stretch? I do. I totally growl, like a lion. Okay, so now let's do the other side. So bring your right leg down, your left leg up, your arms open to the sides. You're going to very slowly let your body roll over, let your right feet go with you. Let gravity win, but you're still able to pull yourself back up and you can look over to the other side if that feels good to you. And then pull yourself back up. I'm going to slide over, so I'm going to straighten my leg out because I'm going to want to do that. I know I'm going to want to. Every time you do the stretch, you'll probably feel like you get a little bit better range of motion. Oh my gosh, I need the stretch so bad. Stretch. Oh, I get very tight from playing the piano right here on the side of my body's. Uh, I think it's my. Those great serrators. Those great they're called. All right, so over you go. If you want to try to kick the wall with your foot, that might be a more intense stretch. You can look over your left shoulder if that feels good, and then come right back up. Oh, so good. Okay, let's do one more. So just roll over, keeping your arms down. Go to the place where your body feels comfortable. You can stretch your foot out if that feels good. Make sure there's always movement happening all the time and that you feel like you can get yourself back up easily. Okay, it's very important. All right, my friends. Usually I have a chair in front of my computer, but right now there's a cat sleeping on it, so I'm just going to march up to see you guys. I'm so glad you could make it today. Thank you for being here. Um, for those of you who liked class today, give it a thumbs up. I could really use those thumbs up. The reason why the thumbs ups are so important is because it makes YouTube send this video out to people just like you. So um, I want more people like you to take my classes because you guys are awesome. So give it a thumbs up so that, um, you know, other people like you will come into class. Also, if you guys uh, have not subscribed to the channel yet, click the little play button in the corner there. Or if you're on your TV, you probably need to scroll down a bit, find the subscription button. Uh, it is worth subscribing because then all of these videos get put in your subscriptions folder. And I just want to make it very clear because sometimes people get confused. Subscribing to the channel does not mean you're paying for anything. Subscribing to the channel is just like liking something on Facebook, like you know, being someone's friend on Facebook or like following someone on Instagram. That's all it is. You're just following me when you click that subscription button. There's no financial co like contract. What's the word I'm looking for? Obligation. It's just, a, you know, saying that you are part of my team. That's all it is. All right. Um, if you do feel like making a financial contribution, uh, this channel is funded by donations. And so you can just click in the link below. There's a PayPal link if you want to make a contribution. I really feel strongly that this class should be available for anybody who needs it for free. And so if you are wanting to contribute to the cause so that other people can see this, you may not be able to afford going to yoga class or going to a stretching class or maybe not in a place where resistance stretching is a thing, um, you can support me in that way to make sure that I can keep giving these classes on a regular basis. Now, write down in your calendar, class is Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. It's Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 9 a.m. Central Time. Uh, and all these classes are recorded and saved on my YouTube channel so that you can always watch them later, okay? Tell your friends, and I will see you guys next time. Have a great day and a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.